So we got a bit of a personal project today. Uh, a couple months ago, my brother asked me to make a, a custom tap for him. So he works in a, a limestone mine down in Tennessee, and some piece of equipment they have, they have to put these plugs in fairly regularly. Uh, these are just some kind of injection molded plastic part, um, but all they have to insert it is just these two little drive dogs here. And they work in a limestone mine, so there's a lot of dust and gunk that gets into the threads, so these strip out fairly easily. So he just wanted something to be able to clean out the threads. Uh, no real cutting needed, um, just trying to move all the junk out of the way. So these threads on here are actually fairly hard to figure out the right size. Um, we could mic them fairly easily, they're 1 and 3 8 OD. But if you look at the threads here, they don't go as deep as they really should. Uh, as best as we could tell uh, with thread mics, and, and thread wires, um, these should be 1 in 3 eighths by 8, but the root of the threads doesn't go as deep as it normally should. So I just sent him um, basically a plug um, that I just turned to 1 in 3 eighths just to make sure it's the right size, um, and it did fit. So we are going to make that custom tap uh, with a 1 in 3 eighths inch thread on it, um, and then a couple features on the backside just for driving with a half inch impact. So we're gonna go through and show you some of the machining of that. Um, we got the first op we're gonna do on the 15L, and then we got a couple more ops we're gonna do on the 1500 to finish it up. We're gonna make it out of A6 tool steel. Um, I've got a bar that's just sitting around that I use for a lot of personal projects. So we're gonna machine it soft. Uh, our local maker space, Sector 67, has a heat treat oven that I'm gonna take the part over to and then heat treat it as well. And I've got a couple of hardness files that will check how hard we end up getting it. So if I could do this again, um, I probably wouldn't use A6 actually, just because it is in a mine, there's, it's gonna get some corrosion on it. If I had the material laying around, I'd probably use something like 17.4, H900, um, something, we really don't need the hardness so much, but I want that corrosion resistance, but this is what I had on the shelf, so that's what we're gonna use today. So on our first operation on the 15L, um, all we're doing is we're just turning the OD of the part and uh, threading it. We'll add a chamfer in there too. So we're just using conversational for our programs. I like to break it up into a couple of smaller programs. So our first program is just our rough turning here and then our threading. And we've got a couple more programs that I made. Threading, you kind of always have to uh, make adjustments to the wear comp to make sure your thread is intolerant. So I have a separate program that cuts down the number of passes for the threading here. Another program, just adding the chamfer on the end of the thread. We're turning the shoulder farther uh, than the threads at a larger diameter. So I've got another program there. And then just cleaning that up and uh, doing facing. I, I like to do facing last. Uh, I know a lot of people generally do that first, but it's just a personal preference. So we got our first program loaded up and we're ready to run it. We don't have flood coolant uh, on this machine, so it's not really ideal. Uh, I'm just gonna squirt it with a bit of oil, but I'm expecting our surface finish isn't gonna be terribly great on our threads. And like I said, the part's going in a mine, so I'm not overly worried about it. So turn our speeds down, start our program. So 
So we'll change to our chamfering program. And then once we have chamfering and cleanup of the uh, major diameter of the threads, uh, then I'll come back for the, the single pass and make sure that our threads fit on our thread gauges. Pull a that. Sorry, start. And this is using the same tool we already had, so I'm not worried about it. Going slow at the start of the program. Run that cleanup program and just offset it a little bit. Thread done. We just gotta turn the rest of this shoulder here and then we'll be done. Fine, what do you turn? I believe it was. Yep, let's go back. Add a bit more oil. We've moved over to the 1500, so we've got the part set in a V-block there. What we're doing in this operation is we're going to cut out the back side of the part, which has a one inch square as well as a uh, pocket for a half inch uh, ratchet drive. Um, so you can use it either with a regular wrench or with a ratchet. So we're ready to go. Turn my speeds down.
I'm expecting that to shrink a little bit after heat treating, so I'm just going to add two thou more. Just open up a bit more. We'll call that good. Move on. There we go. Just a little bit of wiggle. Heat treatment expands it that much? Mm, it kind of depends on the size of the feature, but everything moves in heat treating, so always best just just give it a little bit more wiggle room. Get a little bit of flashing there. I'll just take that off real quick. You can see our setup is fairly sketchy. All we're doing is just drilling a clearance hole in the side for the ball detent on a half inch ratchet. So we just gotta pop a hole in real quick. So I've got the part clamped on the side and then a one, two, three block, just so our jaws of the vise don't twist. This is definitely sketchy. All right, turn the coolant on, let it rip. This, um, I had to do that probing routine uh, to find center of uh, Y and Z, but I have to go off this diameter here, but this is too close to the jaws of the truck. The probe body would have ran into it. So this is just the part I have just to use for touching off like this uh, that I keep around since I, I turned it. I don't really care about the diameter. I'm just trying to find center, so it works well enough and then just touch off the end of the part on X where I have my work coordinates set. So what's the purpose of the channels? Uh, so those are actually making our flutes. Okay. So as we're going around, like this edge right here would actually do our cutting. Mm -hmm. I didn't put any actual cutting geometry in here. Um, Cause like I said earlier, this is just trying to clean gunk out of the threads. So thankfully I didn't have to figure out what cutting geometry looks like. Mm -hmm. So this should work well enough. Um, like I said earlier, we've got our half inch drive socket here, and then one inch uh, flats if he wanted to use a, a crescent wrench or, or something. Other than that, just a fairly basic part, a couple operations. Uh, definitely a couple things I'd do differently again. Um, like I said, I would have preferred using some kind of stainless on this part rather than just normal uh, tool steel. 
just for the corrosion resistance, but uh, having it hardened is definitely gonna help. I'm also gonna try, I have a Caswell black oxide kit at home. So I'm gonna uh, sandblast this part and then try to black oxide coat it, at least give it some corrosion protection. That is a fairly thin coating. And like I said, this is going in a mine. Uh, so I do expect that coating to not last terribly long, um, but it'll help at least. So I've got a little bit of deburring to do uh, on here still. Um, we'll just do that off camera. And then I'll go over to our local makerspace, Sector 67. Uh, they've got a kiln there that they'll uh, let me heat treat this in. Uh, we're not gonna try to film that though, just cause we don't wanna uh, disrupt them.